make this podcast yeah. Tune it for the audio or you can even watch back yeah. Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot cakes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line Sammy got it off the ground And to all the listeners tuned in right now Got debates, analysis, and speculation This is sports talk for the new generation You know where to find us, got a reputation Sick podcast, your number one sports destination Giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line to listen to the sick podcast with tony maradero 55 seconds left in the penalty a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time 
Boston four, Montreal three. Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into Lemair back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> you know, I, 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 there is a bomb. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est bon. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le match troisième de l'histoire. You found the dogs, John. You found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked a young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. It's gonna be sick. Marinaro on this Tuesday, uh, February 14. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Uh, now that I think of it, I probably should have wore red, but I'm wearing my uh, electric blue hoodie tonight. And as you can tell, with wearing my uh, fluorescent pink hoodie yesterday, I went out on a little bit of a shopping spree and I got myself some new gear. Uh, a couple of days ago, as a matter of fact, uh, thanks so much to uh, the great people who uh, who basically make our hoodies. And you can uh, purchase our attire uh, on sportbuffshop.com, by the way, because they carry uh, our sick merchandise. It is the Sick Podcast brought to you in collaboration by Energy Transportation Group, who are leading full-service logistics providers serving all of North America. They are driven to be different. Yes, they are. Also, I want to talk to you about these babies right here, okay, because brewed in Quebec and a winner of a dozen international awards. And, uh, of course, they are worthy because, as I told you, um, I'm not going to tell you I'm the biggest beer fan in the world because I'm not. But this one here, it goes down really, really smooth. Really, it does, because if it didn't, I wouldn't drink it, would I? Uh, La Bita TB are the ones that I'm talking about. They offer quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bita TB, embrace your true nature. And brought to you in part by Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won three games in a row the way they just did, well, the last time before this time was back in the month of November. All right. So it's time that you go back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. The Montreal Canadiens win again. After beating the Islanders on Saturday, beating the Oilers on Sunday, the Canadians beat the terrible, terrible Chicago Blackhawks by a score of four to nothing tonight at the Bell Center. That's right, four to nothing. When was the last time the Montreal Canadiens picked up a shutout? Well, it's the first time that it happened this season. Jake Allen was not overly busy. He stopped all 22 shots that were directed his way, and the Canadians got a first period goal on the power play by Justin Barron, his second after scoring on the weekend. No goals to show for in period number two. Yol Armia scored a goal in period number three. David Savard made it 3 nothing. Christian Dvorak made it 4 nothing. A great game for Jonathan Drouin who had three assists in the hockey game tonight. It's not his first three assist game of the season. He had another one. I believe I read that he now has 12 points in his last 12 games. If that's accurate, that's pretty good time to get hot, Um, especially if the Canadians want to go out and fetch something for Jonathan Drouin, uh, because it looks highly probable that he probably will be traded at the deadline if they can get something for him a couple of weeks back. There were a lot of people that doubted that they could. They were talking about maybe Jonathan Drouin staying with the Canadians until the end of the year, and maybe he gets a PTO next year. Well, 12 points in his last 12 games. Uh, I think it's uh, 10 points in his last 12 games for Mike Hoffman. And if Getty Dadunov tonight looked like he was flying again, it's not the first game, and I believe he has four in his last three. So he's on a pretty good roll as well. We have a roundtable edition of the Sick Podcast for you tonight. And uh, joining me on the roundtable is going to be Charles Alexis Brisbois, who's a writer with Dan Ekoulis and a collaborator on BPM Sport. He's been on with me before. You've seen him on a couple of occasions with Matt O'Hayne as well. Charles Alexis, how are you? 
I'm great, Tony. You're the one I expected to spend Valentine's Day with, so I'm wearing red for you. You know. Wow! 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 Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, listen. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm. If you would have told me a year ago that I was going to be spending Valentine's with Charles Alexis Brisbois and <laughs> with a former Montreal Canadian scout Grant McCag of Recruits and Recruits.ca, I probably wouldn't have believed you. Grant, <laughs> what's crackulating, my man? Yeah, well, I had to I had to boot the the woman upstairs there, Tony, on Valentine's Day. Uh, you know, you know, it's a strong relationship when you can when you can pull that off at the last minute. Wow, wow, I, I you know what? I am I am sorry to have did this uh, to you, but uh, thank you. I'm I'm uh, you know uh, I have a feeling it's going to be double pay tonight. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. All yeah. right, um, we knew they were terrible. Shall Alexi, I'll start with you. Man, are Chicago bad or what? Like, we have never seen more of a, you know, a um, a more obvious tank job uh, than than this in years. I mean, trading the Brinket for nothing, basically uh, trading the Kirby Doc for not much, uh, letting go of, uh, you know, Strom, letting go of some players that they could have used if they were going to rebuild. And it looks like, you know what, they're trying to trade Kane and or Taves before the deadline. They really want to finish last. They really want to go through a rebuild. They went through a little bit of a rebuild last time around, and it led them to win three cups in six years. And it looks like they want to go down that path again. But what a terrible, terrible hockey team, huh? It was really a really terrible team. Um, and, you know, when Kirby Doc, he was 21 when he was traded, if Kirby Doc is too young for a rebuild, uh, this is clearly a job because you want a guy like Connor Bedal because we saw it from the beginning of the season. We saw it on the ice tonight. They had absolutely no answers to the Montreal Canadian, who is not a good team, actually. Um, you talked about Jonathan Tays and Patrick Kane. They're probably going to be traded by uh, March 3rd. So it, it's not a good show and it's not a good look on Gary Bettman, who said, remember, a few weeks ago, no team in the NHL is tanking. You know what? I... I'm pretty sure the Blackhawks are doing it because if not, if this, if this is the best they can do, God damn, it's not a good team. You know, Grant, it, it looks like Chicago is saying, hey, the last time we drafted Kane, the last time we drafted Taves, it worked for us. And we have a guy right now, uh, if we get the number one pick who has the pedigree, and it doesn't mean it's going to materialize, right? But he has the pedigree to be you know, a Patrick Kane player at the very least, if he plays to his potential and probably even more, and they're saying it worked once, let's go for it again. Yeah, you, you know, there, he is kind of in the mold of uh, Pat, Patrick Kane in a lot of ways, like similar size, you know. I think he's going to end up being a winger like Kane, um, and, but better shot and, uh you know, just even more dynamic. So certainly, I think you know they're so bad that uh, 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 I mean, what? They even you know, if they finish last, and uh, the, the lottery odds are still probably around 20, 25 percent, I think, yeah. for them to end up with the first pick. So, uh, but I think they have a really good. You know, they're going to have a really good chance of getting either Fantilli or or uh, Bedard. And I mean, you know, Fantilli be the best player on their team probably next year, you know, that soon, you know, he could step right into their lineup now, probably be in, be their second line center. So yeah, they're going to probably get one of the two big fish. Uh, I think they probably almost 50%, you know, 40 to 50% odds of that happening. And uh, it, yeah, it, it's, it's looking that way. Like they're Certainly, I don't think they're trying to tank on, you know, and, and Bettman, that was the point he made was that, mm -hmm. you know, coaches and players don't tank, but uh, the organization as a whole, like the GM, yeah, uh, I would say that, that you know, at the end of the day, they're, kind of, they're the ones who put the product on the ice, right? So yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's, hard to, it's hard not to uh, say that they're, their goal is to try to get uh, one of the two big fish. Charles Alexi, before we get back to you, I just want to stick with Grant for the next question because he is a draft guru, former scout with the Montreal Canadiens, yep. recruits.ca. He runs his own independent service. Grant, I, I, based on what we've seen since the World Junior Championship, 
and what we've seen after that, it looks like, you know, what a gap that had narrowed prior to the World Junior Championships has now expanded again in favor of Connor Batard detaching himself from the rest of the group. I mean, we agree on that, right? Well, I think he had been doing it before, you know. Okay. The, the month previous to the World Juniors, he had pretty well sealed it. And the, uh, you know, the uh, World Junior sealed it for everybody, I think. And it's just a formality the rest of the way. But, he, yeah, I mean, he's, st he's playing – playing at the same pace that he did the last two months so yeah so but i mean fantilli's been fantastic too like you know the team that gets adam fantilli is going to be delighted you know oh, you, just, you probably, he's, he's, he's an amazing player you probably answered my question then grant because my question was going to be if they don't win the lottery and so you know whoever does goes for bedard and let's just say the blackhawks end up with the second pick and let's just say the blackhawks end up with the third pick the players they got rid of for nothing, will it have been worth getting rid of all of them for nothing if they're going to end up drafting someone third? Well, sure. I mean, uh, uh, there's no guarantee that they were going to finish, you know. You, you pretty much have to finish uh, bottom three to get, to get the top pick. But, I mean... Uh, and they weren't going to do that unless they they got rid of some guys. Like if they had had Doc this year, um, and uh, Debrinket, they wouldn't have, you know, they wouldn't have had a hope of, hope of probably getting Bedard, uh, you know, winning the lottery. But mm -hmm. uh, so, and I mean Leo Carlson, you know, uh, let's not discount uh, how good a hockey player he is as well. And I like him. I like him. You know, Mitchkov, if. Uh, you know, they want to roll the dice. And, uh, I mean, he's as talented as anybody other than Bedard in the, in the draft. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's other there's other players. But certainly, the, the, I think the two uh, top two guys have separated themselves a bit. And they'd, uh, they'd really like to get one of the top two picks for sure. Watch out for Quentin Musty. <laughs> That's a yeah. shout out. To, that's a shout out to my buddy, the snake, Simo, the snake, Boisvert. Uh, Shallow Alexi, this probably went over your head. It's because the snake Boisvert joined me on the podcast, I would say about a month and a half ago. And he said, hey, I'm going to tell you something. Watch out for this guy who plays in the OHL. His name is Quinton Musty. He is a dark horse on the snake is on the snake's list. And that's <laughs> why we're bringing him up because we've had fun with it ever since. OK, Shallow Alexi Brisbois. If I would have told you a month ago the Montreal Canadiens are going to trade Jonathan Drouin and they're going to get real good return. When I say real good return, I mean either a first-round pick or a second-round pick or a later pick and the prospect. If I would have told you that a month ago, you would have said what? I would have said absolutely not because, you know, Jonathan Drouin, the, the way he played for the last, few years actually with the Montreal Canadiens he, he's not that kind of guy who can net a, a, a good return at the trade deadline and the way he played this year I mean it's way better right now but even then I'm not sure if I'm a if I'm a good team if I'm gonna go to Drouin to to patch some holes in my team because there are other options in my opinion better than than him that being said in the past few games he is very involved in the game uh, we've seen 12 passes in his last 12 games. He hasn't scored this year, but he's a great passer right now. So maybe he can become an option. But even right now, I would say it's it's a stretch to think that Drouin is absolutely going to be traded. I think he really helped this case, but I'm not sure he's going to be traded on, the, on March 3rd. Grant, I think he's got 12 points in his last 12 games. He had a three-point night tonight. Jonathan Drouin was the best player on the ice Tonight, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. He was chosen the first star of the game. He had another three-point game a while back, several weeks ago. I thought he was really, really good as well. Um, it took six years for us to see Jonathan Drouin playing like the playmaker that he has in the last 12 games, give or take. Uh, at one point, he was on a hot streak too, but he got injured, and then it was all downhill from there. So I asked Charles Alexi if I would have told him a month ago that you know Jonathan would have been traded for a first round pick or a second round pick or a third round pick and a prospect or a fourth. He said, you know, he would have been really, really surprised. It's not going to happen. 
one month later, seeing Drew Wayne the way he's playing, if trade deadline was tomorrow, would another team be calling the Habs? Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. There's going to be trade value for Drew. He can help a power play, and I mean that can be a difference in the in a in a playoff game. Is uh, you know somebody that that can help out on your power play and and chip in some points and makes you know make some uh, some really uh, interesting passes. I I'm wondering about a team like Colorado. Like I always you know. I still uh, look back to McKinnon and Drew and playing together in, in Halifax and how dominant they were and they went all the way to the to the Memorial Cup. And I've often wondered if, you know, I'd like to see those two paired up again. And it'd be fun to actually see uh, Colorado power play with McCarr, Drew and McKinnon, Ranton and, and you know, right out there. Right. I think, that, like, right. I think yeah. they could do some damage, to be honest with you. Grant, I, I think that's a great team that you brought up because also – you know, he comes here, he signs the six-year, $33 million deal, Charles Alexi, with all the weight of the world on his shoulders, right? Local boy coming home, and there's these expectations, and everyone wants him to be the francophone star in Montreal. If he gets traded to Colorado, he goes in, no pressure whatsoever, and, you know, respectfully, he's kind of like a complimentary player, right? He can kind of like, you know... Uh, you know, not to say that he's gonna he's he's not gonna play a big role, but let's face it. I mean, the other guys are gonna have more pressure on them to get it going, right? McKinnon's expected to lead the team. McCarr's expected to lead the team. Rantanen's expected to be the next guy. Landeskog's expected to be the guy after that. You know, they 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 got players that um, you know are going to um, are going to um, be the ones who are gonna carry the mail for that team he might end up flourishing like we've never seen him flourish before in the National Hockey League. That would be... I, I would be really happy for, for Drouin if he could find that spot out of Montreal without out of, out of uh, that pressure and to be behind stars like McKinnon that he knows and the guys that you just named. Um, in the case of Denver, I'm, I'm just not sure about the, the L fit because, you know, they've been really injury-prone since the beginning of the season. And why sometimes he goes on that injury list. So that may be a concern for that. But if you talk about that on the ice factor, he would be really, really great for uh, as an, uh, of an addition. And if you retain 50% of his salary for the end of the season, you can make it happen with Colorado. So it's a destination you, you may want to suspect for, for Drouin. And I'm sure many teams are going to call if he continues to play like that. I'm not 100% sure there will be a fit, but he has the next two weeks to help himself and to help Kent Hughes to, to trade him out of Montreal to finish that contract and to have a run to a Stanley Cup. And uh, I see, I wish him uh, good luck in, in, in that run. Think about I, this. I mean, uh, yeah, Grant, go ahead. I just, like, I think, you know, there's teams out there that are, like, they, they know what's been happening in Montreal. They know he's been the whipping boy that, you know, he's faced such scrutiny in, in Montreal. I, I think it'd be a smart move to pick him up at, at the trade deadline as long as it didn't cost you a first round pick. You know, I would I wouldn't go that far, but I mean a second round pick for I, I think it's gonna be attractive that his contract's up, you know. Uh because then he could go he, he could go to a team and if he flourishes, he could love it. He could love that there's no pressure, he could sign a, a fair a, uh, extension with the team you know you could help them in the playoffs there's i i think it, uh, for me i think there's going to be several teams that 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 are willing to part with a second round pick to uh to get joanne because you know he's one of the more talented he's still one of the more skilled players in the league when he's on like we've seen it in 11 points in his last nine games i think or 10 games uh you know uh one of the best playmakers in, in the league when he's when he's on and uh, you get him with 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 talent like you know I mean I mentioned Colorado and obviously uh -huh. it may not be the perfect fit but there's there are several teams that would love to have a a, a hot playmaking Drew uh, uh, you know in their lineup uh, for the playoffs and down the stretch and it might be a great fit he might the, with a with the no pressure of yeah you know being traded for a second round pick as opposed to being traded for friggin uh, top nine guy. It, it, yeah. like the, the difference there's got not gonna be any pressure on him so Grant, i love the fit okay nathan mckinnon 
has Arturi Lekkinen on his left wing and Valerie Nachuskin on his right. And before some Montreal Canadiens fans are going, what in the world is going on in Colorado? Lekkinen is the kind of guy that he's on that line because obviously his 200-foot game, he gets to compensate and he gets to insulate McKinnon. And, you know, he does the dirty work on that line. He does the defense work on that line, all that stuff. We know why he's there. But you can obviously change the, uh, the the face of a line, right? And you can make it a more offensive line at home if you want. Put Lekin in on the road. But just think about this. If they go out and acquire Jonathan Drouin, they reunite McKinnon and Drouin. And Drouin is reinvigorated. And all of a sudden, you know what? It, he and McKinnon catch up like, like fire the way they did with Halifax. If you have McKinnon with Drouin and Nachushkin, and then and then Landis Gog returns from injury, and you have him on left wing on line number two, and you have Miko Rantanen on Zuko. right wing on line number two. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, uh, okay. you know, and maybe you have to upgrade at you know at your your second line center position. Maybe you know it shouldn't be JT Comfer. Maybe it ends up being Alex Newhook. Maybe it ends up being another player. But all of a sudden. You know, what Drouin could do, let's keep in mind that Arturi Lekin is on the first wave of the power play, too. If you replace him by Jonathan Drouin, and before a lot of people start saying, hold on a second, if Drouin was so great on the power play, why is it the Canadians' power play is not very good? Well, the Canadians' power play doesn't have Nathan McKinnon. Exactly. It doesn't have Kale McCarr. It doesn't <laughs> yeah, have exactly. Nico Rantanen. No, exactly. You know, he's never gotten to play with players like that since he was in Montreal, you know. He was rarely put with Suzuki. How, how often has he played? He never got to play with Suzuki and Caulfield. I was always hoping that, you know, that, that, that he'd at least get that opportunity. And it's never really, you know, through injuries, through this and that. It just, uh, uh, you know, and a month ago, sure, you wouldn't have said that he got traded, but he was injured too, right? And, I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, I didn't – I haven't thought that he's played poorly this year. I know that the points weren't going in earlier on, but – I thought I, I thought he was competing okay, like not you know he wasn't mailing it in. He just you know playing him with uh, third three third and fourth liners and not not producing. Well, if you had him with like you say the guys that you just mentioned, he's never had you know the opportunity like that. The only time he did was in his when he was twenty years old in Tampa. And he was uh, one of the, you know, what, you know, that's why they made the trade. He looked like an emerging star. You know, he had 53 points as a 20-year-old, and he got to play with Stamkos and Hedman and those guys and got to play in that Young Guns. Remember the yeah. hoopla when he got picked ahead of Galchenyuk yeah. for the team? And, we're, you know, we're, but he was great that year. He great in the playoffs and, you know, and um, and then they made the trade for him and put him with, you know, He's he's they made him a center first line center to start, and I mean that was a bad move to start. You know, all of a sudden you got this guy that should be breaking through as an offensive player. You know, because he he made that step the year before, and then he, you yeah. make him into. Then he's got to go out and he's got to check Sidney Crosby every night, and then yeah. all the top line centers in the league, and he never crossed the blue line in some games because he because he was afraid that he he'd get caught up ice. So. I think they just they handled it wrong and, and poorly, and he's still only 27 years old. There's that too. Like he's in his prime, and if you know, maybe now he's just blossoming finally. Yeah. And so if he goes to Colorado or another team with, you know, Boston or who knows, like you know, throw him out on Boston's power play on the point. Yeah, with McAvoy, Marchand, Pasternak, and Bergeron or whatever. Like there's all kind, you know. Pittsburgh with uh, Crosby and Malkin and, and Latang on the power play. Like all the, you know, he's never, Montreal's never had anything close to that, that, that he, that Drew yeah. could play in the power play. Grant, with, so. Grant, I think, I think you found the best fit and Charles Alexi will end it with this on Jonathan Drewing to Colorado. But if I'm the Colorado avalanche and I'm taking a look, I'm waiting to see Sean Monahan to see if he can play before the trade deadline. Monaghan, I thought, was excellent for the Canadians before going down with that injury. He knows the Western Conference very, very well. He's a very solid performer. You start putting Jonathan Drouin to play with McKinnon and to play with Nachushkin, and you start putting Sean Monaghan in between Landis Gog and, uh, and Mikko Rantanen. My God, I-, I think 
uh, I think you're the front runner to repeat a Stanley Cup champion. I don't think there's a team that, and I don't care. Um, I don't. I don't care. Look, the Bruins are obviously a great team. Toronto's pretty good. Tampa Bay's not too shabby. Thank you very much. But I think Colorado ends up becoming the Stanley Cup favorite at that point. And not to say that. You know, these two players are the best players in National Hockey League. It just gives them a different dimension. It gives them more depth to an already very, very good team. Yeah, of course, if you we talked about Drouin, if he ends up in, in a team like Colorado, he, he doesn't have all of that pressure to be uh, to be that guy. And Sean Moran, we saw directly the impact on, uh, on the Montreal Canadiens when he was injured. We saw the impact on Nick Suzuki because in the NHL, if you want to win in 2023, you need to have a, a good line of centermen. And Sean Monan brings that depth to the team. He, he, there's less pressure on the first centerman when you have a Sean Monan who can play center and he can play his wing if you want to. So, uh, of course, the the the... The, the injury is, is, is bad right now. Uh, I, I want to see Sean Monahan play a few games uh, before the trade deadline just to, to spice things a little bit mm -hmm. to see if he can handle the, 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 the way he can play in the NHL right now on, on February 2023. Uh, and if the Colorado Avalanche is interested in Sean Monahan or in Jonathan Drouin or in both, if they can fit it, it, it could be really great for that team and it could be great for the Canadians because they are tools that can uh, that can help win a Stanley Cup in 2023. Grant, I'll talk to you about a former member of the Colorado Avalanche. When the Montreal Canadiens traded Arturi Lekanen last season to the Colorado Avalanche, they got Justin Barron in return. When I saw Barron join the Canadiens, um, you know, he looked like he did everything good, <clears throat> but he didn't do anything really great. <clears throat> Pardon me, I thought he was missing an X factor. Uh, I thought he was not overly physical, looked a little bit soft at times. I wasn't blown away in preseason. I didn't think he was going to start the season in Montreal. But the last week, this guy looks the most comfortable he's ever looked. And, you know, I don't know if he's ever going to go back down. And if he does, I don't think he's going back down for a long time. How about you? Oh, he's, like, this time around, like... uh when he first got called back up again, he had a couple of really poor games. And I, I know I mentioned, you know, he's got to go back to, he's got to go back to Laval and, and get in a full year. Like he, if you look at his stats, he's, you know, in addition to still being very young, he, uh, he hadn't played a lot of hockey in the last three years. You know, he had injuries and COVID and the whole works in, in uh, junior. Yeah. And then also as a pro. So, uh, hasn't got a lot of experience and um, but then he got back in the lineup for a game he looked okay got in uh, another game scored and looked okay and he's just he's looked better and better ever since I think it's been a few weeks now so yeah I mean he's he's developing right before our eyes and I have to give a uh, shout out to uh, Stefan Robida for for the job he's done with the uh, the young defenseman, it's just... Uh, Good for you. I don't know, you know, they have five rookie defensemen that have scored goals, and I was looking up stats tonight to see. I don't think it's ever been done. Like, there's never, in the NHL history, had a, a club that had five rookie defensemen that, that scored goals in the same in the same year. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a really good... Uh, he's replaced uh, Luke Richardson even, you know, better than I, than I thought he would. I've been really impressed with Robida. Tell Alexi from one defenseman to another. Uh, I'm going to give myself a Barry Horowitz, uh, formerly from the WWF, and tap myself on the back for this one because <laughs> I loved when they made the move. Jeff Petrie traded to Pittsburgh in exchange for Michael Matheson. I love the trade. Matheson, the way he's been playing lately, over 23 minutes flying. He's going to make some mistakes because he likes to handle the puck. But he's also going to do a lot of great things with his with the puck on his stick, and uh, this, this is a modern day NHL defenseman. He is really, really fast, and I, I think we're surprised <coughs> every time we see him skate because it, it, it's really important in in the NHL right now. It's really important for the new direction of the Montreal Canadiens. 
um, and you see the way he, he carries the puck. He's not the, the best puck-moving defenseman of the NHL, but that's not what we're asking of Mike Madison. We're asking him to, to hold the fort with all that young rookie defenseman that we're talking about, and he's doing it great. And it shows when he is in the lineup or when he's injured because he, he, he's acting like that quarterback that we need. And as I said, he's not the perfect quarterback. He's not the best quarterback in the league, but he's doing a really decent job. He can help on a power play. He can help the young defensemen to adapt to that NHL uh, level. And, you know, he, he learned from really good players. Of course, he had that, that stint in Florida. But those two years in Pittsburgh, when you're playing with Sidney Crosby, with Evgeny Malkin, with Christopher Latin, it, it really helps to develop. And right now, it's his time to shine. He is playing in Montreal. He is a Quebecer. So clearly, it, it those are all good factors that put him in confidence. He's playing for Kent Hughes. He was his, his agent a, a year ago. So yeah, I'm really satisfied from what I'm seeing right now from... Uh, from a guy like Mad Mad Mike Madison, it's really a, a a good a good one by Kent Hughes. And you know, you talked about the, the trade with with Jeff Petrie. When uh, Petrie was on the trading block, we now understand clearly more than ever why mm -hmm. he wanted to have an established defenseman in return of his services. Because if Madison was not there and there was another rookie or another young defenseman, it would be really really difficult some nights. You're right about that, um, Mike Matheson. Uh, his first pass, the way he joins the rush, the way he skates. I think he really, besides the fact, I think one of the reasons why it's worked out, not only we have a local kid coming home and really excited to play here, he fits into Marty St. Louis concepts, right? Grant, he plays the game the way Marty St. Louis wants his players to play the game. You correct me if I'm wrong. No, I agree a hundred percent. And uh, like what Charles was saying, you know, he, uh, I mean, it reminds me a bit of when they, when they, picked up Petrie you know, and came in and they, all of a sudden they got that, you know, late twenties defenseman that, 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 that can um, log 20 to 25 minutes for you for the next five years. You mm -hmm. know, he's like, he's the, you know, Petrie when he was 28, you know, when he came to the Canadians, like, uh, but I also think he's uh, maybe a little less mistake prone, you know, and, yeah. and a little more, at the start of the year, he struggled a bit, but you have to give him some time. You know, I think every defenseman that's come here uh, over the past uh, few years has, has struggled a bit at the start. You know, Sherrod, uh, you can name a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Savard, you know, last year, at first we thought, oh, geez, his, you know, we got Carl Olsner the second here. What's going on? Yeah. But he, you know, he's another guy that, that's, and and again, I I think Robida, everything points back to Robida. Like, he's done a hell of a job this year with the defense core i think uh we're gonna do something that we haven't done yet on the sick podcast we have taken calls yes but i've never opened up the phone lines when i've had a three-man or three-person round table which is what we have now so if some calls come in they could be directed towards grant they could be directed towards charlotte Lexi, they could be for me they could be for all of us it's time for you called You called. Call. Presented by Playground. Brought to you by Playground, your premier gaming destination located just over the Mercia Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. I'm going to give the number. It's 1 888 585 SICK. 1 888 585 7425. It's a toll free number. So if you want to jump on a line, you have an opportunity to do it now where, once again, you can ask a question to one of us, to two of us, or to all three of us. Also, in yellow and Sammy back at Master Control, you can patch through a few questions and we can have them directed towards Grant or we can have them for Grant or we can have them for Charles Alexi. In the meantime, while we're gathering some questions and we're going to take some calls, uh, I want to let you know that, of course, we still have an ongoing contest which is The Undertaker's One Dead Man Show, which goes on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. at the Olympia Theater, all right? And there you have it, uh, 7.30 p.m. on Thursday night, a chance to see The Undertaker live and personal, and it's going to be his One Dead Man Show. And this is what you have to do. Uh, we put it out there on social media, on Twitter. You just have to retweet it, and you have to like it. And on Instagram, we put it out there as well, and you have to like it, and you have to tag three friends. 
Uh, do the same thing on Facebook and like it and tag three friends. And tomorrow night when we join you with the SIG podcast at 10 p.m. Eastern, that's when the contest will come to a deadline. That's when the contest will close. And tomorrow night um, at around this time or maybe just a little bit earlier, we're going to announce our two winners who will win two tickets each to go watch The Undertaker's One Dead Man Show. And then after this contest is over, I think we're going to have another contest for you, which we're going to start actually on Wednesday night. When this one closes on Wednesday night, we'll start another contest for you, which I think you're going to like a lot. Once again, we'll get to your calls. If you have any at 1-888-585-7425, we'll get to your questions. But before we do, before we do, um, Nick Suzuki was hit. And he was hit hard by Murphy, and it was a legal hit grant. And this is not the first year that we're seeing this. We've seen this for a while, that when a player gets hit, even if it's clean, a member on his team comes to his defense, drops the gloves, and says, you can't hit my player. And Josh Anderson, I don't know what got into him. Maybe it was me calling him out, or maybe, you know what, I won't give myself that credit. But Anderson (laughs) went to Nick Suzuki's defense, and he basically said to Murphy, don't touch our best player. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I mean, I didn't mind it, but uh, because it was Suzuki and uh, it was Montreal and he was defending, you know, I get that, but I don't like that. Uh, you know, it snuck into junior hockey about 15, 20 years ago, and I didn't like it then. And it, you know, junior players become NHL players and, you know, it's now into the it, – it's – it's it happens all the time at, at, at the NHL level, and I I don't know why, you know, why they feel that they're compelled to have to fight somebody for a clean hit, you know. It, I yeah. mean, that's – the game uh, – I grew up, you know, I loved to hit. Hitting was a favorite part of the game for me because I wasn't a great scorer, so I had to be good at something. But I hear you. Well, I never, I never got, uh, you know, no one dropped the gloves uh, because I hit a, hit one of their teammates clean. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, they got told to keep their head up. Yeah. Know, at the uh, the next day. So Grant, I just go ahead. If I can, let's hear what Mark and pardon me, Grant. Let's hear what Mark in Westmount has to say. Look at that. That was us behind the scenes. Pretty cool. Hey, Mark, welcome to the Sick Podcast. What's going on? Mark, are you there? Why does this happen all the time? Mark going once. Mark going twice. Mark going Hello. three times. Hello, Mark. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What were you doing exactly when I was calling your <laughs> name for like 30 seconds? Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to know. No, hold on a second. Now I want to know. Uh, is this Ray? Uh, how, how old are your viewers? Uh, <laughs> okay, it, it, uh, let's, so hold on a second. Let me let me just ask you as uh, now. Uh, I, I think I know where you're going with this, but, I, but 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 the curiosity is killing me, Mark. Mark, are you alone or are you with someone? Um, as of right now, alone. <laughs> right now, you're alone. I asked you what you were doing. And you said, I don't want to know. And then you said, how old are my viewers? Um, was there something on TV that um, that you were watching? Or? Yeah, there's somebody with a beautiful blue sweater. I got it. All right. We got to go. Nice yeah, well, I appreciate it. All right. Uh, 1-888-585-7425. I mean, I know I'm good looking. But I didn't think to that point. But, uh, you know, was, uh, wow. Uh, things that happen on Valentine's. one uh, 888 is just like in shock. He's like basically saying, did I just hear what I just heard? You know, Shal Alexi, you know what the good news is on all of this? Is What's that Grant's on video, you're on video, but Mark in Westmount was not on video because I think if Mark would have been on video instead of on audio... I think we would have got scared there. So let's get rid of Mark and Westmount and bid him a good night. <laughs> Woo! 
Wow. Uh, <laughs> First ever That's, call I've taken, uh, and it'll, it's a memorable one, Tony. Yeah, no, the sick podcast has just uh, gone <laughs> to another level. But as uh, as uh, luck would have it, uh, you know, the first person in the history of this podcast to find Tony Marinero very, very appealing uh, is Mark. Just great. Okay, where are we going here? Agnello and Sammy at Master Control with 1-888-888. 585-7425. 1-888-585-7425. There has to be somebody else who thinks that I'm, I'm you know, very good looking, uh, I would think. Uh, some uh, some comments in the in the chat. Sick. It's the love line. Uh, Cuckoo says, good Lord. Mustafa says, absolutely sick. It's Bubble T says, that was sick. Dan says, sick. Kelly says, where did he go? Kelly, I got rid of him because... Uh, um, I was scared to hear what he was going to say next. Ryan says the power of the internet. Cuckoo says George Larac is jealous now. Uh, others coming in. Raw footage says it's the sauna pick. Um, uh, it's Bubble T says got to appeal to every demographic. Uh, and uh, Kelly says Tony on fire. And uh, Nick says your wife, Tony, finds you hot as well. Um, well, I don't know about that. But, um, you know, anyway, I don't want to talk about my personal life, but I, I think it's going to get a lot better. I think it's going to get a lot better in about uh, 15 days from now uh, because, you know, she's in the mood every month that ends in Arch. So I think some good days are ahead. All right, RJ <laughs> in Candiac. <laughs> RJ. Yes, hi. How you doing, bud? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh that uh, first caller, I think, uh, was pulling a rack on you. No, I, I'm speechless. I'm. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm a little bit rattled, and I don't rattle easy. You know, when you do when you do a live podcast, the beauty of the internet and it's live. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's on Twitter. Is that things are said, things are done, and you know what? It's live. It happens. You kind of prepare yourself for everything. But I did not earlier today expect. That when I was going to go to the first caller and he was going to take about 30 seconds before answering and I asked him what he was doing, that he would respond, I don't want to know. And then I asked him and then he said, how old are your viewers? And then I said, are you alone or with somebody? And he said, alone. And then he <laughs> said, you know, I like what you're wearing. I, I got rattled and I don't rattle easily. <laughs> I think it was definitely with the pillow. He, yeah, yeah. You know what? George Larac, um, I, I don't know what George Larac did with that pillow there, but he's given everyone all kinds of ideas. Uh, you know what? When you and Larac are on, you absolutely kill me every single time. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, talk, ask a question about uh, that drawing being traded. Uh, what do you think about? A trade to Colorado with Monahan and Drouin for Gerard, and uh, like maybe a third pick. Uh, do you think Gerard's available, and do you think he'd be a good fit in Montreal? Grant. Yeah, I, I, I was going to comment earlier there, Tony. Like I don't, you know. Uh, first of all, I don't know if Colorado has the capital to get both Drouin. And it would be very difficult, Grant. It would be very difficult. Yeah, very know, difficult, yeah. Uh, I I asked AJ uh, Haifley, who, uh, you know, covers uh, de them very well in, in Denver, and he, yesterday, who, what they'd probably be looking for, and he said a center, he thinks a center and a depth defenseman, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know if, to, uh, you know, if 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 it's one or the other, it might be Monaghan that they, that they lean towards. Yeah. Certainly, if you know, and, and I mean, I don't know the salary cap implications either. Like they may just from the money point of view, they may not be able to do it. You know, yeah. they already did uh, make one trade uh, prospect uh, earlier in the year for Nieto. So um, you know, they're already uh, got rid of one former first round pick, and they just may not have the uh, you know what what the, I think there'll be better offers. Put it that way than than what. Colorado can do as far as getting both of them in a package. And uh, I don't really know that Gerard is, uh, 
Montreal is teeming with good young defensemen. I don't know that they need to uh, to pick up another one, uh, especially uh, one under five foot ten. When when I think Lane Hudson's the future, uh, you know he's the future uh, power play quarterback along with Mayu back there. Um, and uh, it's really tough. You don't see uh, NHL playoff teams with two two defensemen under under five ten. It just, it just, you know, there's, it's never happened. I don't think in the, you know, in, in 40 mm-hmm. years. And, and yeah. uh, to me, I think that they, you know, they really love Hudson and he's the future uh, little guy back there on defense. And I, I just, I don't see them wanting Gerard to be honest with you. So I hear you. No, I don't, I don't think that that that's really a fit. All right, okay, so uh, back to more questions. Thank you so much, RJ and Candiac, for calling the Sick Podcast. We appreciate it. Tell your friends about it. If you like what you're watching right now and you're watching it on YouTube Live or Twitter Live or Facebook Live, comment Sick, S-I-C-K. It's our way of feeling the love. Like it, share it with your friends, and if you're going to listen tomorrow on Apple, Google, or Spotify, leave us a five-star review if you can. It goes a long way. Uh, we really appreciate that as well. More phone calls at one 585 sick one 585 7425 By the way, those who missed it earlier today, the CFL has actually taken control of our very own Montreal Alouettes. We know the way the ownership situation has been now uh, for the last little while. Uh, of course, it was uh, it was the estate that had you know the ownership of the team. And uh, there was all kinds of dissension within the club. Um, Mario Cicchini, president, um, was basically released from the club several months ago. Uh, But everyone knows that he was doing a great job. He and Gary Stern, unfortunately, it just didn't work out all that well. And Gary Stern, uh, I guess, was pretty influential in asking the estate to put him out. And they did. But the CFL has said, no, no, no. You know what? Uh, This is not a serious operation. What's going on here? Uh, we need to have you know have someone come in. We need to have new owners, and uh, the CFL has taken control. They brought back Mario Cicchini right now, who's going to preside over everything. It's business as usual for General Manager Danny Machocha. And even though this is a tough day in Montreal sports, and especially for the Montreal Alouettes, who unfortunately have lost some several key players, Eugene Lewis walking away and moving on, quarterback Trevor Harris now a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Even though the past couple of weeks have been very, very difficult for the Montreal Alouettes, here's hoping that this is a start of the franchise, you know, gaining back its credibility, stability, getting back on their feet and getting a new owner and hopefully some local ownership that will care in the team. And now the big talk is whether or not Jeff Molson is going to step up. We know that he is a fan of football. It would make kind of sense to tie in the Alouettes and the Canadians and have a little bit of a monopoly in the city when it comes to sports teams. Uh, you would think it could be Jeff Molson who could be a potential owner. There are others. Last time around, Eric Lapointe's group had stepped up and looked like they were very, very interested. Vince Guzzo wanted to step up and buy the team, but then unfortunately there was a little bit of a falling out between him and Danny Machocha, a little bit of dissension there. Some things were said, but at the same time, Maybe they've patched things up. I don't know if they have. Only they know if they did. We're going to keep our eye on that, and we're not going to avoid the topic, and we're probably going to tackle it maybe even as early as tomorrow on the Stick Podcast. But tonight, the Canadians played a game, and they won their third game in a row after beating the Islanders on Saturday, beating the Edmonton Oilers on Sunday, and shutting out the Chicago Blackhawks by a score of 4 to nothing tonight. And well, Guys, we didn't even talk about you all, Armia. He had a pretty good game, and so did Evgeny Dadanov was flying as well. Back to some calls. Paul is in New Brunswick. What's going on, Paul? Not much, Tony. How are you? Very, very well. Say hello to Grant McCagg and say hello to Charles Alexi Brise Bois. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Go ahead. Uh, we like to talk about our young defensive core, and I'm wondering, thinking ahead a couple years from now. Okay. Are the Canadians going to be in a position where Gouli, Logan Mayu, whichever group of the next young generation they have in their lineup, so we see like basically all our defensemen being under three years of experience and investing a lot of money up front because we're not going to invest in blue line? 
Grant, you want to tackle it? Well, I don't think Matheson's going anywhere for a while, you know. Nope. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to be a top three uh, staple in the Canadians uh, lineup for a while here uh, on the blue line. And uh, also, um, Savard, he's, you know, he, he looks better this year than last year. So I don't think he's ready for the Boneyard either. So, yeah, and he's I from mean, the province of Quebec. And it's not like yeah. they have a tremendous amount of depth on the right side yeah. of the fence either. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the, typically defensemen and defensive defensemen especially stay, you know, solid into their mid thirties. You know, uh, so I, I don't see Savard going anywhere for a couple of years either. And they might even extend him for a year or two and have him, you know, eventually as a five six and uh, and a mentor. You need mentors. You know, you can't just ship everybody out. Um, it, you know, there's never been a club in history that just went all with young guys. You gotta, you gotta pass down that experience and care, uh, leadership, and you know, it's one of the reasons why. Uh, in addition to him being a power forward, that I don't think that uh, the Canadians want to really sh ship out Anderson either. You know, he's a good, uh, good role model for the for the young guys that uh, work hard and, you know, off ice uh, the the maturity, all those guys. So. Uh, I think you can have two veteran defensemen uh, to go along with the, those young guys, and they're all mature. Like I'm not too worried about yeah. them, you know. Like Gooley, Matt, or Gooley and and Jack I and, and Harris are all very mature young men, and uh, yeah, Kovacevic is like mid twenties already. So, you know, he yeah. may not be he may be a rookie in the NHL, but he's not a he's not a greenhorn by any means. So yeah, I, I, I think I think uh, that. They've got a nice group there uh, going forward, and uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to be too young. I think it. I like I like uh, the plan, and I yeah. I think yeah, the future looks good. Shall Alexi Grant was talking about Josh Anderson and the way he's been playing lately, and there's there should be no rush in getting rid of him. But in the words of the million dollar man, the great Ted DiBiase, everyone has a price. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. If we <laughs> Why don't we uh, why don't we give a shout out here, of course, uh, to Matrix and MatrixHomeFitness.ca, uh, some premier fitness equipment, and you can bring it home the way I did with the treadmill and the rower, and the way Agnello did with the elliptical and the bike on its way in the comfort of your own home. Visit MatrixHomeFitness.ca, and uh, there you have it. All right, why don't we get to some questions, Agnello and Sammy? at Master Control, unless there's more calls coming in, because I wouldn't want to leave any on the line. If there isn't, we'll get to some questions and we'll ask away. Jason Sills, should we re-sign Drouin at a cheaper price for next year? Grant McCag, yes or no? And if so, what's the price? Uh, you know, I really think that he needs a fresh start, you know. Yeah. Uh, but certainly if he if he wants to stay and i mean i i would be shocked if he did but you know he is a montreal guy i don't know what i don't know what he's thinking but i i think he needs a new a fresh start somewhere else but if uh you know if they don't trade him and he says he wants to resign and, and at a cheaper price well you know a couple of years at, at eight million or something for the two years maybe would be you know something you consider but it, that that's a good question yeah. and, I, and i pondered it two ways but i think for just for his own you know i mean he took a mental health break last yes, year he did. two years ago, you know so uh i just for his own mental uh health i think that it's best that, that he moves on shall alexi yeah grant you covered it in my in my opinion i i, I don't see the coming back and we saw in the, in the last few years he was really um, a target for from the fans. Um, I, I think there was too much pressure for, for him in Montreal during those years. Uh, I wish him well somewhere else and I think it's going to be best for him. So I, I do not think he's coming back to Montreal, no. All right, okay. Um, Christopher says, should we have a new coach next year? Come on, Christopher. You got to be kidding me. Marty St. Louis is doing a great job. All right. Okay. More questions coming in. Will Monaghan get traded or do we resign him? Shall Alexi? Um, it, it's a hard question because of the injury right now. Um, a few months ago, it was it was clear he was going to be traded. There was a first round pick uh, that that was possible to to acquire. Uh, right now, if Kent Hughes doesn't get his price, 
is he going to decide to to explore the market of signing him, for example, for one year contract and saying to Monahan, let, let's say if you stay one more year, we can trade you in a year if you are healthy and you can make a little bit more money because he can make more money in Montreal than, for example, in Colorado and you can trade him with retained salary at the trade deadline. Uh, he is in an environment that he seems to enjoy in Montreal. He has a role um of uh, of guiding those young players so maybe he, there is a possibility to to see him resign but i do think the the, the biggest possibility is to see can't use trade him in the next two weeks um but one thing is sure tony you cannot lose him as a free agent you need either to resign him or you need to trade him because losing him as a free agent would not be a good solution when you try to Uh, rebuild that team and I know we acquired a first round pick when uh, with the trade with the Flames and of course that was really great but you need to capitalize on that and you need to uh, either keep him or trade him uh look let's let's please stop you know with the with the whole do we need a coach I mean John Cooper would not get this team in the playoffs all right so let's please stop um okay uh other questions coming in and uh we probably have a couple more Raymond Singh One of my favorite realtors in the world. Sing, sign, sold. His question, which goalie prospect is available that the Habs can trade for kind of like a barren prospect that was drafted and is already into his development with another team? Grant? Uh, yeah, I don't, like, that's a good question. I don't, you know, uh, I don't have a pipeline to the, you know, I don't have the phones tapped on the GMs or the other 31 teams, uh, you know, th I don't know that there's goalies available. Uh, uh, any good, talented young goalie prospects, uh, teams gonna, are going to want to keep uh, unless, you know, the price is right. But, I, I, you know, that caught me off guard. I'd have to look at goaltending uh, depth charts of, of teams to, you know, I mean, there's a kid in Calgary that, that's not bad in Wolf, Dustin Wolf, but mm -hmm. does Calgary want to part with him? You know, uh, Devin Levi. I think he's the future in Buffalo. I mean, those are the two names that come to mind right off the bat. But uh, Montreal's got a, you know, Dobish, I think, is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he may not be the best uh, young goaltending prospect out there, mm -hmm. but he's he's good. And uh, you know which pickup I like, Grant? Less than a year ago, St. Louis trading uh, Vili Husso to Detroit for you know the 73rd pick overall in the draft and then Huso signing a three-year deal with the Red Wings I thought that was a great deal for the Red Wings yeah yeah you know something like that like uh it it's it's a good question um I think the Canadians are going to draft a goalie high this year you know high. they're going to have a lot of they're going to have a lot of a lot of uh top 90 picks and uh multiple first round picks and I I think they're going to go that route and and They, they're pretty stocked pretty well every position but but goalie as far as young mm -hmm. talent goes and I think I think they're going to target a, a one of the top goalies in the draft this one here is going to be the last question of the night on this Tuesday February 14th and it is how about Gallagher says Tom Sagos should we trade him is that an option guys is it safe to say that I can answer for both of you that Brendan Gallagher, with the amount of years remaining on his contract that pays him $6.5 million a season, there is no taker in the National Hockey League right now, with all due respect to Brendan Gallagher, not only with the contract, not only with the amount, not only with the term, but also in regards to his health, which it seems that, you know, the truck has been in the garage more often than not over the last couple of years. Is it safe to say that Gallagher is untradeable at this time and maybe? for the um for the next little while here i think so and i mean i i think brendan gallagher may have to finish his career on the long-term injury list like like shea weber or like carrie price only time will tell because i'm pretty sure he doesn't want that he really is a competitor But the way his body is is acting since a few years, he, he's not the kind of guy that you want to take on with a team because of his salary and because at the end of every season, it seems to be harder and harder. The toll of the season is hard on him and you need a guy like him in the playoffs, but he cannot 
it doesn't seem like he can have an impact on the playoff because of his body. So as of now, I'm I'm sure that no one will want to touch this contract. We we need to remember how important um, having flexibility on the cap is right now. For some GMs, we see trades of guys like uh, Marc Andre Fleury who was traded for nothing after winning the Vizina because. Uh, the, the Blackhawks decided to take his full contract for one year. It is really, really important in today's NHL to have mm -hmm. some flexibility, and Brendan Gallagher cannot be traded. Shal Alexi, thank you so much for your contributions tonight. Grant McCag, thank you very much as well. Shal Alexi, once again, writer with DonnieCoulis.com. He's a collaborator at BPM Spa, 91.9 .9 on your FM dial in Montreal. Agnello and Sammy and Master Control, is there any way that we bring up both, there we go, both their Twitter handles, there you have it. At Shal underscore Alexi and at Grant McCagg. Grant was a former scout with the Montreal Canadiens in the Bob Ganey regime, and now uh, runs his own and has for a couple of years his own independent scouting service, uh, recruits and recruits.ca, you can check it out. And more importantly, Subscribe to support a gentleman like this who works very hard at watching a lot of games, a lot of kids, a lot of prospects, and he'll have a lot of material for you throughout the entire season leading up to the draft and and, and after the draft and a lot of interviews as well. Guys, um, I say thank you every night to all the collaborators. I will say a double thank you considering that it is Valentine's. Um, enjoy the rest of your night. And if it's not going to be a good one on Valentine's, I mean, then then, then you guys, you're not, you know, you, you stink. All, all right, okay. I'm just... <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it as much as the first caller there, Tony, but I'll, I'll yeah. try. Well, I'll uh, enjoy yeah, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm <laughs> unfortunately I'm going to have a visual for the rest of my life on Valentine's <laughs> that I just would rather not have had. But anyway, uh, I appreciate the support. Tell your friends about it. Uh, sick interviews, sick haps, sick haps talk, uh, and uh, sometimes the conversation gets pretty sick. Tell them about it, share it, like it with your friends. Tomorrow night, same time, same place. I'm Marinaro. Good night. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with Tony Marinaro on YouTube, Instagram. Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And La Cage. If the last time you went to La Cage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to La Cage. The menu will surprise you.